So here is one strategy to simplify a rate law expression. Consider the reaction CH3COCl plus H2O gives you CH3COOH plus HCl. And the rate is going to be governed by a second order expression being the negative rate of change of CH3COCl by dt is equal to Kf times the concentration of CH3COCl and the concentration of H2O. And you could solve this expression as the, the second order rate law expression that we just completed, that complicated expression that we just finished. Frequently, however, and this is the strategy you can use to simplify that process, is that you can change your experimental conditions such that if you use a large excess of water in this case, then that water, that, that amount of water, that concentration of water isn't going to change as the reaction progresses. And so because of that, you can then write the, a revised rate law expression such that you have the negative D of the concentration of CH3COCl by dt is equal to some new rate constant K prime F times the concentration of CH3COCl, where in this case the K prime F is equal to the original rate constant Kf times the concentration of water. And that both these values are now constants because we used a lot of water in the system, so the concentration doesn't change. This is called flooding. But the result of this is that we can now solve this rate law expression as if it was just a simple first order rate law expression, making the math that much simpler. All of this analysis that we've just completed assumes a specific reaction order to solve the expressions. Now that we have these solutions, we can use empirical data as well as rate law and integrated rate law expressions to determine the order of components in a given reaction. Here are four strategies one can follow to use the previous expressions to empirically find the order of a given reagent. The first is the isolation method or, as I've just called it, flooding. And this is where we keep all the concentrations of the reactants constant except one, which simplifies the rate law to a single component and we can focus on the single component to determine its order. The integration method, where we measure the concentration of the components at various times and evaluate the data with each rate law. This method is typically not very accurate. The third method is the differential method, where we start with the rate law expression instead and take the logarithm of both sides and solve for the orders. And finally, fourth, we have the half-life method, where we measure how long it takes for half of the concentration of a given component to remain. And this is dependent upon the order of the reaction. We will now do an example of the differential method and the half-life method. So in this example where we're going to use the differential method, we're going to consider the following reaction where we have two reactants A plus B and it gives us some product C. And what we're going to do is we're going to determine the order of A and B as well as the rate constant K for the reaction where we have a set of data here where we have at some initial time we have our concentration of A, we have our concentration of B, and we have the initial rate of our reaction. And so what you'll notice here is that we have two of the runs. We have the concentration of B, where we've designed this experiment such that they're exactly the same. And so we're going to exploit that to be able to start this problem as what we can do is we can cancel out one of these components so we can then isolate for one of the orders. So let me show you what I mean by that. So in general, the rate is going to be equal to the rate constant k times the concentration of A raised to some power x times the concentration of B also raised to some power. In this case, I'm going to label it as y because they're going to be independent of each other. And so what we want to do then is, or what we can do is we can say, well, the rate in a specific run, in this case, we'll say the rate in run two. And if we divide it by the rate in run three, my K is still going to be the same. This is A in run two, B in run two. This is A in run three, B in run three. Well, in this case, when I substitute in the numbers, I'm going to have the rate at run 2, which is this 4.2 times 10 to the minus 2. The rate in run 3 is 1.68 times 10 to the minus 2. That's equal to k over k. My a in run 2 is 4.6 times 10 to the minus 4. My, and that's going to be raised to the power of x. My uh, concentration of A in run 3 is 9.2 times 10 to the minus 4. This is also raised to the power of x. 
my concentration of B in run 2, 6.2 times 10 to the minus 5, divided by 6.2 times 10 to the minus 5. These are both raised to the power of Y. But again, because this concentration of B is the same in both of these runs, then they cancel out. And so what I've done here is I've eliminated one of my unknowns. My unknown in this case was Y, because it ends up canceling out with the, the value on the top and the bottom. By doing this division as well, I also cancel out the second of my three unknowns being the rate constant k. And so what I'm left with then is just this expression that only has one unknown, this value x. And so now we actually can go and solve for this value. So if I do this division, what I end up with is 0 0.25, and that's equal to 0 0.5 raised to the power of x. Here's where we take the logarithm of both sides. So I have the log of 0 0.25 is equal to, well, the log of 0.5 raised to the power of x. I can bring the x down, so that's just x log 0 0.5. I can solve for x. x is equal to z the log of 0 0.25 divided by the log of 0 0.5, and that means then my x is equal to 2. I can employ a similar strategy in order to find the order of b, which is y. In this case, I'm going to take runs 1 and 2 because I don't want um, my concentration of b to cancel on this time, so I won't take 2 and 3 again. But I could just as easily have taken 1 and 3. But like I said, in this case, I'm just going to take 1 and 2. That means my expression is going to be, I've got rate is equal to k times a squared times b raised to the power of y. So that means I'm going to write 5.25 times 10 to the minus 4, which is my rate. From that, I'm going to divide it by 4.2 times 10 to the minus 3. This is the rate of run 2. I have my k over my k. I have my concentration of A in run 1, 2.3 times 10 to the minus 4. This is squared. That I'm going to then divide by 4.6 times 10 to the minus 4, and that's also squared. Here I'm going to have 3.1 times 10 to the minus 5. This is raised to the power of y, my unknown. I'm going to have this divided by 6.2 times 10 to the minus 5. This is also raised to the power of y. And so again, I now only have two unknowns because now I know my x. My k's, because I'm doing this division strategy, they cancel right out. So I'm only left with one unknown, which in this case is my y. When I do this division, when I move things around, what I end up with is 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.5 raised to the power of y. I can take the logarithm of both sides, log 0 0.5 is equal to y, log 0 0.5, and what this means is that my y is equal to 1. So for this expression, this rate law expression, my total order is going to be equal to 3, since it's just going to be 1 plus 2. The final thing to solve for in this problem is simply just to find what is the rate constant k. And so I'm just going to make myself a little bit more space. But to do this, I can go straight back to the original rate law expression where I just got rate is equal to my rate constant k times the concentration of a, and I know that's now raised to the power of 2. Concentration of b raised to the power of 1. So I only have one unknown. I just don't know what k is. And so I'm just going to substitute in, in this case, the data for run number 3, but I could use any of the three runs. And I get 1.68 times 10 to the minus 2, and that's equal to k times, in this case, 9.2 times 10 to the minus 4 squared times 6.2 times 10 to the minus 5. And what that leaves me with then when I solve for k to be equal to 3.2 times 10 to the 8 per molar squared per second. Where these units come from that I've just written in for my k, I mean, they're just used just so that they can balance out so that on the left-hand side here, my rate law expression, I'm going to get molar per second. And in each of these concentrations, these are all going to be moles. But in this case, because I've got a squared written here, then in this expression, I'm going to get moles squared times moles. And what that means then is that my k to turn these moles cubed, being moles squared moles, into moles per second, or sorry, concentration per second, 
then I have to divide by two of the, the concentration units, and then I also have to divide by seconds. And so that's where my units of m to the minus 2 per second come from. 